Howdy howdy, and welcome to the Tea Weasel, where we pair teas with movies for your enjoyment. Today we'll be looking at... Doctor, to mule and blabber about a treasure map in front of this particular crew demonstrates a level of ineptitude that borders on the imbecilic, and I mean that in a very caring way. That's right. You guessed it. 2002's Treasure Planet. The dream come true for creators Ron Clemens and John Musker. Or these guys. Second birth on your right! You can't miss it. Hey, thanks. Treasure Planet is one of the first Disney movies overshadowed by another. Ironically, Stitch is an Easter egg in the beginning of a movie. The vocabulary used in this movie made me chortle with glee when hearing them use the numerous syllabic words. Before we dive into the movie, it's tea time. For this tea pairing, I have created something truly out of this world. I would say it's really cool, too. I made a butterfly PT lavender rose ice cube and put it in lemonade. Butterfly PT is blue, but it will react to citrus, giving it this ethereal, cosmic-y purple color. And if you get the mixtures right, it will come out really beautiful. Making the ice cubes is really easy. What you want to do is add no more than 5 grams of a butterfly PT to 1 liter of water. The more you add, the darker it will become, like my soul. Unless you want to make layered ice cubes like I did in my Kubo video, link right here to watch that video. You can add all the ingredients in at once and steep it for about 10 minutes. I like a lavender taste in it, so I will add 6 grams of lavender to the concoction. Then for the rose petals, I'm adding only about 5 grams of those. Dump those all into a French press or tea press if that's what you have. If you don't have either one of those, put it into the largest container that you can put a lid on, so that way you can let it brew and keep that heat in during that 10 minutes. After the 10 minutes, pour it into an ice cube tray. I'm using silicone to make my life easier when trying to get them out later. Freeze until frozen. For the lemonade, I am using crystal light so I can get the healing power of crystals in addition to all the health benefits from the tea. What? It's not made out of real crystals? Huh. If you're making lemonade from scratch, kudos to you. If you're not making fresh lemonade, just follow the instructions on the packet. Once your lemonade has been made and ice cubes are frozen, what you want to do is add the ice cubes to the lemonade. If you don't plan on drinking an entire pitcher's worth of lemonade in one day, just simply add the cubes you want to a cup and add some lemonade. I would recommend using whatever see-through cup you have. That way you can see all the cool ethereal color mixing as the ice cube melts into the drink. However, make sure it is a spoiler-proof cup because I'm about to talk about this movie. Treasure Planet came out in the year 2002. That same year, Lilo and Stitch came out. As much as I love Lilo and Stitch, it did get put in the spotlight more than Treasure Planet. Disney did this because because. Anyways, this movie follows a young protagonist named Jim Hawkins. And like most movies with a young protagonist, it is a coming-of-age story. Or as the story puts it, I'm a boy, no, I'm a man. Jim's dad leaves him at a very young age, meaning his mom was the sole caretaker of him. And life is not going well for Jim. Until a space turtle crashed lands on the dock outside the inn they own, giving him the map to Treasure Planet. Jim, with the convincing of the alien dog creature Dilbert, go on an adventure of a lifetime to find Treasure Planet. His mom only agrees because of two reasons. Are you saying this because it's the right thing or because you really want to go? I really, 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 really want to go. And it's the right thing. And I really love that in this kid's movie, they show that sometimes the thing you really, really, really want can also be the right thing. It's not either or. It's not always black or white. It, it's multiple layers of complexity, which shows in the characters later on in this movie. Upon arriving on the RLS legacy, RLS is the initials of the author of the original book. Dilbert and Jim meet the Captain. Get it? Because she's based off a cat. Dilbert 
and the captain naturally become best friends immediately. Well, Jim gets sent to go work in the galley with Mr. Silver, a cyborg. Through the mighty musical montage power, Jim and Silver become very close. Silver actually becomes his new father figure, which makes his inevitable betrayal even worse. Silver gives this great speech about all the good he sees in a young Jim. You listen to me, James Hawkins. You got the makings of greatness in you, but you gotta take the helm and charge your own course. Stick to it, no matter the squalls. And when the time comes, you get the chance to really test the cut of your sails and show what you're made of. Well, I hope I'm there. Then Silver tells his pirate crew that it was all a lie to get close to the boy. Even though we know that's not true, Jim doesn't. This sets off a train of events where Jim, Captain Milia, and Dilbert have to escape the legacy in order to live. Crash land on a planet that's the treasure planet. Planet. But Amelia gets injured and Dilbert stays behind to make sure she's okay while Jim scouts ahead. While all scouting, Jim finds Ben. Ben! Of course I'm Ben! The bioelectronic navigator. Oops. Ben has gone a little crazy, being alone for hundreds of years. Solitude's fun! Don't get me wrong, for heaven's sakes, after a hundred years, you go a little nuts! <laughs> Plus he also lost his mind. Who hasn't lost their mind at least once or twice? Jim is able to steal back the real map to the treasure on Treasure Planet. But during that time, Silver breaks into their hideout captures his friends and waits for him to come back. Being forced to use the map, they find their way to an ancient society with super advanced portal technology. Why is it always ancient civilizations that have these super advanced technologies? Walking through a portal to get to the treasure, they set off all the traps. Then Silver sacrifices Jim to fulfill his dream he's sacrificed so much for. And from that moment on, he lives knowing that he cost the life of his surrogate son and is never truly happy. Not. Could you imagine all the heads exploding from the end of a Disney movie like that? All the chaos. It would be beautiful. What actually happens is Silver sacrifices the treasure in order to save Jim. After escaping the exploding planet, Jim actually lets Silver go because of that bond they have between them. The rest of her living crew actually gets sent to jail, so oh well. Jim joins the Space Force, works at the newly reconstructed inn that his mom owns. Dilbert and the captain have cat-dog babies. And that is a super oversimplification of this movie. There's a lot of fun things I've left out in case you haven't seen this movie so I didn't spoil anything for you. Although this movie came out in 2002, I actually never watched it until beginning of 2021, and then right before making this video. And I have to wonder what little me would have thought of this movie, which if he grown up loving space even more, I probably would have missed a lot of the complex relationships between the characters, and I might not even like this movie because it's a little bit slower at times. The art style in this is great. It's one of the few Disney movies that is a cross between 2D and 3D. Silver, being the antagonist, isn't necessarily a bad guy. He's just a cyborg who gave up some stuff on his own journey to fulfill his dream. Not all villains have to be mustache twirling evil. <laughs> to be a good antagonist in a movie, Silver is just a guy going after his own interests who just so happen to collide with our protagonist. And the fact that he does show regret and remorse when going too far or saying something that upsets Jim shows that he's not a bad guy. He's just, you know, a bad guy. Anyways, thanks for watching. There's a link in the description where you can rinse or buy this movie just in case if you don't have Disney+. Plus. And until next tea time, watch the movie and have a relaxing cup of tea.